would like to, uh, to welcome the team and let you introduce each other and take us through your project. And looking forward to hearing all your experiences. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon and thank you for uh, taking the time to come here. We would like to especially welcome our client Alessio, uh, Hilary from IAU and Patrick from ETRA. Um, our project is on the global governance of trail running. I'll start by, uh, I'm sorry? Yeah. I'll start by just uh, introducing my team and telling you how we structured our project. Um, so we have Anna who will be talking about our experiences from the World Championship in Peña Golosa. Alexi who will be taking you through the continental and country analysis. Sergio who is going to be talking about the methodology. And I, Aisha, would give you the brief background and introduction to the project. Together as our team, we will take you through our conclusions and our suggestions for the next steps for the IAAF. So um, our story begins in 2015 when the IAAF competition rules were amended to include trail running as a discipline of athletics. So this amendment brought around two changes. Firstly, it meant that trail running would now be given the same treatment as any other traditional form of athletics like track and field or cross country. But it also opened the road for the 214 member federations of the IAAF to start or to continue their process of a formal integration of trail running within athletics. Uh, so we have identified uh, three key issues uh, before we could start this process of integration. The first and what we possibly see as the most critical is a lack of clarity in the definition of trail running. Today, as the situation stands, we have three disciplines of running. We have trail running, ultra running, and mountain running. There is an overlap in definition, and it's not really clear to distinguish between uh, these three disciplines. So to talk, take it through it, trail running is just an off-road running discipline where the only requirement is that less than 20% can be on a concrete road surface, and more than 80% needs to be on a trail. Uh, the other requirement is that it needs to have a marked course. Now, to talk about mountain running, the definition is very similar to, to trail. The only introduction that it brings in is a requirement for an ascent and a descent. Uh, let's talk about the third one is ultra running. Again, there is no real consensus on what this discipline really means. To some federations, it's a long road race. For others, it's a long off-road race. But what we can comfortably say that it's a form of a long race, which is longer than a marathon distance. But clearly, a lot of confusion in whether these are three distinct disciplines of athletics or not really. Uh, the second issue that we think that needs to be considered is conflicting governing bodies. So we have the IAU that looks after ultra running and WMRA that looks after mountain running. Both these are under the patronage of the IAAF. A couple of years ago, IAAF has got into a technical partnership with ETRA concerning all things trail. On the right hand side of the slide, we have another discipline which is similar to um, trail running, but is completely privately organized and is not nothing to do with the IAAF currently, and that is sky running, which is controlled by the International Sky Running Federation. Extremely popular, extremely profitable. Uh, the ISF is a unit member of the UIAA, which in turn is one of the recognized federations by the IOC. Uh, the third is um, today, unfortunately, the most popular races may be the Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc or the Salomon Golden Trail series are organized by private race organizers and private sponsors. Uh, this brings in issues such as no uniform application of rules, no uniform application of the VADA anti-doping code, and no real control on how this sport is going to expand. So we believe that the current is an extremely crucial time for IAAF to get involved with this sport, otherwise it's going to be a huge missed commercial opportunity. So this is where we come in. Us, we believe our project is both an investigatory and a recommendatory exercise. In terms of it being investigatory, we are looking at the 214 member federations of the IAAF to determine whether they are governed directly or indirectly um, 
uh, whether the government trade running directly or indirectly. Other questions that we're going to be looking to is what are the roadblocks, if any, that they have faced when it comes to integrating the sport? Do they have national championships? What are their relationships with their athletes? Based on our investigatory finding, the mission of our project is to suggest a way forward to the IAAF on how best it can, along with its member federations, integrate trade running as a discipline of athletics. Uh, I'll now hand it over to um, Sergio, who will take you through what was our methodology. So our methodology consists in four steps. The first step is about data collection. So how we can collect data from the all 214 federations. We had decided that the best way was to send it, was to send uh, was to send an online questionnaire for all federations, and the questionnaire was sent by IW, in order to have more answers. The questionnaire was sent by IWAF in English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. The, it, con it contains 51 questions, of multiple choice questions and qualitative questions, divided in 11 blocks. And according to, to the answer, you can jump from one block to the other. The questions were more about trail, ultra, mountain, and sky running. Each member federation had one month to, to answer the, the questionnaire, and we, during this one month, we sent three reminders email. The step two, it does work. So the step two, that now you, ha you have all this information, what we should do, how we can put all this together. So we create, for each country, we create a snapshot with all, this in all, the, all the information, quality and quantity uh, information. So, and according to the answers, the country could be classifying three different, two, three different scenarios. The first one, when you are involved with three running and you have national championship. The second one, you are involved, but you don't have national championship. And the third one, you are not involved with three running. The third step was another source of information. We went to the three world championship in Peña Colosa to interview some member federations. But we had so many countries and we had to decide which countries we could and we, we should interview. So our criteria was to focus on the top eight targets, eight country targets, and also according to the answers from the questionnaire, we, we would like to have, we had interview with countries that showed interest to host world championship. They had some kind of conflicts, internal conflicts with other entities. And also, if they were asking for some kind of help from for, for IWAF. And the last step is the conclusion with all this information. And then I'd like to show the results that you have from all this from all the, from, from the methodology. So we had the, the great number of, we had 98 answers from all these member federations. It represents 46% 40, of all the member federations. And it's important to, to say that the majority were from Europe, 42 uh, member federation, but it's also important to mention that we had answer for all the top eight countries like Canada, United States, South Africa, uh, Brazil, China. <coughs> and here is just an example of the snapshot. So here you have all the answer from the questionnaire and from the interviews. Here you have the Quali the quantity answers, so yes or no, with logos. And here you have a space to write, to give more comments, and to add something that we got from the interviews and also from the, uh, from the questionnaire. So uh, based on the results of the, of the survey, we found out that 59 member federations have integrated 12 running and that European member federations strongly over overweight on the over overall result in the globalization of the sport. What's interesting also to note from this chart is to see the lack of, of split between a direct control, uh, a direct integration of trail running and an indirect one. Bearing in mind that direct is that trail running directly reports to, to the athletic federation and indirect is just through a third party. Um, when you still doesn't work. Uh, when you look at a continental snapshot, you can see that, for instance, for the, for for trail running, we chose to show you Europe, which is the big chunk of of, of the sport. You see that 74% of the member federations have already integrated trail running as per, as part of athletics and that it, there's almost a 50-50 split in terms of the 
the integration of the sport directly or indirectly. Most of them have, have already implemented national championships and would be interested in doing more for the development of the sport. When we look at ultra, which is another discipline, as we've seen, uh, we can see the very strong integration of this sport within U uh, European athletics, with 85% of the member federations having in integrated ultra. And for U European federation, it mostly means that it's a road race event. Which relates to, on a global level, there's a clear lack of understanding and agreement globally in terms of what ultra running means, with almost a 50-50 split in terms of whether it's a road race or an off-road race. We've done so the same exercise for the six continents of IWF and have come up with some key points for each of one of them. To summarize, basically, African federations are strongly interested in the development of trail running and would like to integrate it more, but they need IWF for having the resources, the understanding on, on the sport, and some resources. While South America and Oceania are really interested, most of them have already implemented it, but they would like a further globalization of the sport. Finally, you can see the split in the perception of the sport between North America and Europe, with North America having a much more focus on the freedom of the sport, the lack of regulations, and, and uh, the, the, uh, the avoidance of too much rules controlling the sport. Thank you, Alexis. So now I'm going to talk to you about the Peña Rosa Trail World Championship that we got to attend to. The IASTS team went to Castellón de la Plana and was able to witness firsthand how this event took place in such a well formed way. What do we want to evoke here? Trail running might not be a popular sport right now for most of the people. Nevertheless, it's growing insanely, and that's why the IAAF has to take action. We were able to talk to 20, we were able to interview 26 member federations, and we were able to witness 49 member federations in the race. As you can see, it was insanely organized, and it, it, it was perfect for what the event wanted to evoke. So what did we learn in Peña Golosa? The takeaways that we had were many, but these are the main important. What roadblocks faced member federations while trying to integrate trail running? First of all, private sponsorship and race organizers. Private sponsorships su such as Salomon are avoiding top athletes to go to a world championship. If you have a world championship, you want the best athletes. It's a representation of the best of the sport. This is becoming a, program, a problem with the race organizers. Lack of finance is pretty straightforward, especially member federations in South America and Africa are looking for finance from the IAAF. Freedom of sport. Trail running is a sport that is free by essence. They don't want structure and they were built that way since the beginning. We can't forget this so that the IAAF can work hand in hand and know how in technicality. We want information, the member federations want information and they want it integrately for everyone. They want to know they want the information to be accessible for everyone in a, in a concrete manner. Now, what suggestions were from the member federations to the IAAF? First of all, what we came back to, freedom in the sport. Be supportive and not authoritative. Second, the NFs want to develop the sport in the youth. Trail running average ages are pretty high, so they believe that if we integrate it from a youth, the sport will be more developed and more accessible. The anti-doping, currently athletes are not very happy with the I-10 doping system that is implemented, so that has to be checked. The championship is number one. World, the world championship should be the best and bring the best athletes, and this should be the epitome of the trail running athlete. And finally, as a global sport. Right now, the sport is pretty concentrated in Europe. We want this to be more accessible for other continents. Um, so based on all this information that we've gathered, I think now we're going to come to our recommendations and what is the road ahead or the trail ahead for IAAF. Um, the first issue that 
we've repeated over and over again is a complete lack of understanding or clarity on uh, what is the differences, if any, between uh, these three disciplines. So this is what we suggest. We think that the definition of trail running as it stands today should remain unchanged. It's a simple definition. It's flexible. All that says that any race that is less than 20% on road and more than 80% on um, off-road should uh, is a trail race. Uh, when it comes to mountain running, which is Rule 251 of the IAAF competition rules, we believe that it is not, it's, it's not really a separate discipline, but it's more, it can be, um, it, it's just another variant of trail running. So it does have specificities like incline and ascent, but these specificities do not warrant a completely separate sport. Uh, when it comes to ultra running, we again believe that it's more like a time or a distance demarcator. So in fact, any race which is longer than say 6 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours or longer than in terms of distance of uh, uh, 42 kilometers becomes an ultra race. So this is what we propose. We think that trail running should be the parent sport within which various disciplines such as mountain and ultra running should be included. It's explained out here. Mountain running would be totally within the bubble of trail running. Ultra running would stay a little outside as well because it also involves a road race. So to simplify it, any race less than 42 kilometers on a surface road is a road race, on a surface trail is a trail race. But for example, the race in Peñagolosa would then be an ultra trail race because it was longer than the distance of 42 and it was on an off-road surface. Um, our second recommendation is really stemming from the need of the trail running community where they believe that there is no single point of contact and there is a lot of confusion on what the, on who to approach when it comes to what their issues are and um, so what we suggest is that there needs to be a single point of contact for example we've given it the name international off-road running association uh, so how would this work? We would say that the members of the IORA would be athletes and race organizers and the member federations of the IAAF would only be involved through the IAAF. So it would be a structure where IAAF would be in charge of MF relations while the technical aspects of the sport like um, how, how to organize races, how to choose races, what should be the ascent and descent, what should the world championship be would all then be decided by the IORA. This would bring about more streamlined when it comes to WADA application of WADA code, uh, IOC charter and CAS as the dispute resolution mechanism. In terms of financing, this is just uh, inspired a little bit by the current ETRA and IAAF relationship, but it's just a suggestion where we think that 85% could then be raised by the IORD through um, sponsorship and race fees, while 15% um, could then be given on a contractual basis to the IORA because it would be the technical partner of the IAAF. So now let's talk about marketing and the communication strategy. Currently, the IAAF doesn't have anything in their website about trail running. If you want to become one of the members of trail running and have seriousness and, take in, and the athletes take you seriously, then you have to include them in your website. Second, social media. Social media now drags the world whether we like it or not. Where was the IAAF during Peña Golosa? Overall, we have only seen one post on Instagram of Peña Golosa and about trail running in general. We believe that there, that is a suggestion that IAAF has to have a defined communication strategy to portray their willingness to work in trail running and to become an actor in it. And finally, broadcast trail running championships. I know what you might think. It's long, but it's possible. There have been other sports that have done it before and even trail races have done it in the past. There can be different ways of doing this and we just have to be creative to find a way. Further on, another suggesting about training and guidelines. Very straightforward. First of all, there should be trail running conferences and workshops in which all MFs and other stakeholders who are interested reunite and have common ground on the different types of rules and um, technical and organizational knowledge about courses, etc. Going hand in hand is the collaboration between MFs in relation to technicians, officials, and other stakeholders. This, ha this has to be important so we just cement solid foundations. Finally, there has, be, there has to be a more active role of the continental organizations in providing technical assistance to different MFs. And the Bible. 
There has to be a manual that can serve as a guide to member federations on how to organize trail running races. This is necessary and useful, and if implemented, it will give everyone a solid ground. So it's clear that um, the majority of the races of trail running is, is, is concentrated in Europe. So it's important to, if it's not good for the sport and also it's not good for the athletes, for the athletes, they, they, they must come to Europe to compete, to, to make points and to be in the ranking. So our suggestion is we need to foster the continental championship. ITRA, they must recognize races outside Europe, then the athletes doesn't need to come here to, 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 to compete and to, 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 to go to the rankings. And also, uh, seven out of eight cha uh, world championships were in Europe, so it's important to have another one outside Europe. Uh, flexibility, it's important for the sport. The sport is changing all the time, it's in trail running. But we, we understand that we need to have a harmonization of the rules, that our suggestions for the World and Continental ch Championship, uh, it must be, f the rule 252 two, two, must be entirely applied for, for all the World and Continental Championship. For the other championships, the national and other one, our suggestion is to uh, apply the close one, that we understand the fundamental uh, basic of the trail running. Other recommendations that we have are relating to anti-doping, so uh, that is a global concern for every sport. Currently, ITWA is organizing uh, it through the, the health uh, policy program, excuse me, uh, that is both uh, prevention and sanction on, on the practice of, of doping and prevention of, of help. What we suggest is to, to follow the water code since now trail running is integrated within the IWF as a part of athletics and that IWF has water code as the standard. It will have for a policy something very innovative coming from the movement of trail running should be conserved, but only as a prevention and not as a sanction and, and a thing. Another point is on the commercial development of the sport. Road races from the IWF have created a different sort of label for the quality and the prestige of the races, and we, st we strongly uh, advise the IWF to leverage private race organizers to do such thing for trail running in order to give more visibility and understanding of, of the races and the sport. Lastly, uh, we've, as Aisha showed in the introduction, we've got the International Sky Running Federation. This is sort of a variant of trail running and it's mostly stepping beyond its, its borders and boundaries of the strict definition of the sport. We have seen a private race, so, uh, ISF reaching to private race organizers for joining the ISF label, and this should not be accepted. Therefore, uh, the, the two recommendations are just to make sure that um, every, every member federation for the athletic world do not sanction any, any sky races, as it might be the case in Mexico and <coughs> Poland, and that uh, it's, um, it's ISF stays within the boundaries of the sport. To conclude, we have tried to time the, the recommendation in order to make sense and have a gradual approach in order to make sure that all of these recommendations could be implemented. So it starts obviously with the definition of the sport and what it is, then to create a unique point of contact to, be, to build more transparency within the sport, and finally to develop it both uh, commercially and in terms of the globalization of the sport. We now open the floor for questions. Thank you for your attention, and Aisha will be moderating the questions. Thank you.